Well, our text this morning comes to us from the book of Psalms. This is a psalm of ascent. This is one of those psalms that the people of God in their pilgrimage to Jerusalem every year would sing along the way. So the ascent being up to the hill of Zion where the temple was located. But on that journey from Canaan or, for, or pardon me, from Galilee or from wherever they were, they would all come together and they would travel like, it was like church camp. They would all travel together, families together. And at different times they would sing these songs. Now the 128th Psalm is one of those psalms that speaks of the blessings of family. And uh, with that, I will read the psalm. How joyful are those who fear the Lord, all who follow his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you will be. Your wife will be like a fruitful grapevine flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous young olive trees as they sit around your table. That is the Lord's blessing for those who fear him. May the Lord continually bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as, you, as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. I have a theory that that is one of those psalms that is repeated when tensions were beginning to build within the camp. When husbands and wives weren't really getting along that well together and the kids were starting to misbehave. We have to be told what's a blessing sometimes. We have to be reminded if it's a blessing and it's so easy and we know it, we don't need anyone to tell us. I was at Costco a couple weeks ago and I got a, such a charge out of a young family. Going through Costco, two kids, maybe five and seven, and the big sister was kind of making comments and, and being mean to her little brother. Little brother was being mean back. Mom and dad were going through Costco with stern looks on their faces. It looks like they weren't talking. <laughs> and I thought, there's family life. It's so beautiful. And so we need to be reminded of the blessings that, that God gives to us. And in that psalm, he reminds us that work is a blessing. What a blessing it is to work hard and then to receive the fruit of your labor and to be able to enjoy that. That that, that woman in your life is a blessing. She has borne those children. She has put up with all of their, their misbehavior and all of the tensions and all the stuff of a household. Those children I love this image, are like olive shoots around the table. I have to be reminded sometimes that kids, especially when they're young and then into adolescence, they really are a blessing. We have to be told that sometimes, but they really are a blessing. And the blessings also of moving through life, and then even moving to that place where one day you're able to lay your eyes upon your children's children. So the psalm is a reminder that these are good things. They're, they're gifts of God. Even though as we go through life, oftentimes it doesn't feel like it. So often it is that particularly in our time, fathers bail on their kids and their wives. We have a, we have a, a cultural set of circumstances that are enhancing and, well, the, the brokenness of families is enhancing the reality 
of the growth of poverty in our, in our culture. I saw a man on Oprah. I was looking through the internet for some of this material. I saw a man on Oprah who was an absent father. And Oprah asked him why he left his family, his wife and his children. And he said, well, because of my drinking and my dope smoking and because of my carousing, I just didn't feel like I was a very good example for the kids. So I left. Now, I can't believe that in this generation, fathers, this is the first generation of fathers that have been involved in drinking or dope smoking or carousing. But this is a generation in which it is somehow okay to leave, to abandon. And in that, we have a deep devastation to those children. I mean, the right response for one such as that And why on Oprah they didn't say this? Stop drinking, stop smoking dope, and stop carousing. Man up, go home, work hard, support that wife and mother of your children. Support those children. Be there for them. The Apostle Paul, and I referenced this just recently, the Apostle Paul said... Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. What is the man's responsibility in relation to the family? What is, that? What is the responsibility of a father but to self-sacrifice? The family doesn't exist for our sake. We exist for the sake of the family. We are to, as men, sacrifice pour our lives out for them. And if it means that we sacrifice the drugs, the alcohol, the other women, it should go without seeing. But between 1987 and 2007, there has been not just a growth in masculine unemployment, but filing for mental disability has gone up from 1.25 million to 4 million a year. In other, in other, in other words, working the, the system, working the welfare system so as to support a life that is irresponsible. A life of sloth. And perhaps of, you know, that drinking and drug smoking and all that sort of thing. Rather than you abandon your family and you're on your own. You leave your wife and your kids, you leave them destitute, and you're going to be in trouble. I spoke with a young coach yesterday, 22 years old, after, after a basketball game. 22, and he came over and talked to me. Word gets out that I'm a minister. <laughs> and so he came up, and we were just chatting, and so I was asking questions about him. And the conversation went around to his relationship with his father. Never saw his father. And then stepfather. Well, he has a horrible relationship with his stepfather. His stepfather was one of those. All he did was stay home and watch TV all day, living off of his mother. And he has no relationship with either his father, whom he has never seen, nor his stepfather.
broke my heart. Young man who's working hard. He's working hard, trying to build a life, but he has no mentors or examples. He has no one to look to as an example of, of hard work, of, yeah, of industry, of, of faithfulness, of one who works to build family and reinforce community. No examples. And I wonder if that's why he kind of has nuzzled up close to me. That if this young man isn't looking for a mentor. You know, I was heartened this morning as our dear brother, Blake, whom we haven't seen in a while, came in. He lost both his dad and his grandpa in this last year, and um, close to that. So he came in wearing hand-me-downs from his father. The only thing that bothers him is that now he, he fits into them. <laughs> but however broken are the relationships that we have with our fathers, they're still our fathers. And it comes to the point where we are there to serve them. When they have served us all their years, when they have been gone, and their greatest gift to us was time with, with mom, when they've been gone because they've understood that their responsibility is to provide, to protect, to nurture, and to guide, They've understand that, they've understood that, and they've been gone so that they could provide. And they've built a strong life for us so they, that they, that we as, as children would have protection. And they dragged us to church so we would have nurture and guidance. And then the tables become turned and we we're in a response, a time of responsible service to them. Or we ourselves must attend to their needs as they advance in their years. And despite whatever it is that has gone before, they become so precious to us, so very dear. Well, I was 25 years old, full of myself, at Princeton Seminary. <clears throat> because I was at Princeton, I thought I was pretty smart. <laughs> we think dumb things when we're 25 years old. But I came home, it was Christmas time, and um, around the dinner table, a scuffle broke out between Dad and me. We always, we always, all of our fights were intellectual, arguing. And I got fed up with Dad, slammed my fist on the, on the table, said, Dad, I'm not a, I'm not a 16-year-old kid. I'm not a 16-year-old kid. And Dad, in the way he would argue when he was losing the argument, he'd go personal. <laughs> That's how you're just a kid, you know. So I stormed out, and I went out and drove around the city, gone for about four hours, came in about 11.30 that night, and uh, Dad must have heard me, he was probably waiting up. He came downstairs where I was, and he said to me, I said, Kurt, I'm so sorry. And he covered his face and he wept. He convulsed. And I'd never seen that. I'd never seen my father weep. And it tore my heart. 
but it was such a gift that my father would put up with one at 25 who was acting like a 16-year-old kid who thought so highly of himself to argue in front of family with dad. And you know how it is if you've been privileged to be with your father in his advancing years. I look back with great affection for times when I, I was able to uh, cut his hair and trim up the sideburns. Dad, when he'd shave, the sideburns would get longer and longer because he couldn't quite shave up the way he should. So I'd trim him up, trim up the back of his neck, make him look good, tie his tie. At one point, I gave Dad a shower. And those have become profoundly precious memories to me. And I was so glad also that my father could look around his table and see his grandchildren when I would bring them for Christmas time and have the the joy of all that chaos of, of the table with kids at it. So the Lord reminds us that we, as fathers, are blessed to have that woman. We are blessed to have those children. We are blessed to have a faith that reinforces and builds upon those, those most essential ties of family and relationship. And, and we are blessed when we see the, the extended community of, of families, children, and work to, to build together a, a community that, that hangs together ultimately and finally around a core reality that is, a, that is an immovable faith in God. <clears throat> And that one day we would look upon those beloved ones, those fathers, and we all have one, and see there the, the tender, precious child of God that he is to us. Will you bow with me in prayer? Lord, life is tough. Wherever we are in life's journey, keep us responsible. May we rise up and seize upon our duties. May we be honorable in all of our relationships. And and may we undergird all of our relationships with an understanding of, of love. How even when it's tough, even when we don't get along, that other is created in the image and likeness of God and is ultimately a child of yours. Thank you, Lord, that your Son taught us to address you as Father, that you stand before us all as an example to which we aspire but never can enter into. And therefore, we become men of humility and genuine care. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.